Welcome back to Long Crime, everybody. I'm Jesse Weber. We are going to have three live trials today. A lot happening. Let's get started. Tell you where we are. All right. So, Judge, what'd you make of that part? I mean, this is again trying to talk about her her drug abuse and all of that. And again, I want to just all bring in another special guest that we have with us as well, criminal defense attorney Silva Megardichian. So she's here with us. We're going to break all of this down. She's on with us for the next couple of hours. Um, and now that I, Silva, we have you actually, let me start with you. This is a fascinating case. And this witness has doesn't have the best background. She's not coming in with the best, uh, in you, you know, with the best background in terms of the drug abuse, but also her role in this. You know, she left this this girl with someone else, a complete stranger. So is the jury going to look at her and say, we don't have sympathy for you. And you know what? We don't like you and we don't believe you. I mean, could this backfire on the state? Absolutely. We see this a lot when, in fact, there is credibility issues with the witness. I think the defense doesn't have to do much. She told so many different stories about what happened that she's admitting is a lie now. The defense is really hanging their, their complete defense on if you can't believe something she said, you shouldn't believe anything she says. There's a lack of credibility. There's a lack of, you know, just overall, if you can't believe something, you shouldn't believe everything. And that's exactly what the defense is trying to do. The defense, by not doing their opening statement, is telling the people, the prosecution, hey, you have the burden to prove your case beyond a reasonable doubt. And you're using this witness who already admitted to lying about everything. It's just jury don't believe anything she says. And it, so far, it seems it's hard to tell where the jury is going to go on her credibility. But it seems like an effective defense, considering right now, it doesn't look like they have much more. Well, you know, there's another part of this, Judge. I'm curious if you thought about it. If Even if you don't have sympathy for her, Ebony Wiley, it does tell another story of this man who was seeing multiple women. And again, as I said before, the first thing he says when he meets Ebony Wiley is asking, oh, you, how old are you? You know, some reference to her age. And it's so eerie because think about what he's charged with here. I'm curious, what do you think about this telling the whole story of him as a, uh, a, a man who is involved with multiple women or it has a relationship with women and there's a sexual component to that as well so let me suggest this based on my experience in child welfare if in fact he's convicted of this crime jesse i do not believe that this is the first child he has perpetrated against because generally people who commit these kinds of crimes against nine-year-old children sexual assault if in fact he's convicted and found that he did this it is not going to be the first instance. There is grooming that goes along with that. There is a vulnerability. They Predators find those people. And yes, he's going to ask about the age of women he's with. He's going to have multiple partners because, quite frankly, if, in fact, he's convicted of this, then he was probably, through those women, trying to find, locate, meet young girls because these types of perpetrators are not one and done. So let me ask you this, Silva. This is an interesting case from a number of different angles, but one of them is as we try to understand what the defense strategy here, as the judge said, this is a tough case for them. I mean, the evidence is pretty strong. However, one of the things we know that the jury doesn't know is the defense has already been preparing for the penalty phase. They filed a notice listing 10 mitigating factors uh, that include Richie suffered a head injury as a child, that he suffered mental and physical abuse, uh, that he grew up amid poverty and violence. Why are they saying this? Why are they putting forward this? Why are they preparing for this? Unless they know he did it, unless they think that he's going to be found guilty. That's the part that drives me odd. You're already talking about his mental health. Wouldn't that have come up in a, this part of the trial? That's the part that confuses me. I'm curious if you can make sense of it. You know, it's the, def the clearest way I can do this is the defense is doing their job. The fact of the matter is, when you're in this stage in front of a jury, you have to fight your case on the facts, and you have to fight the case and show the jury that the prosecution has the burden to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt. The defense, to be a proper defense on this defendant, has to show in the penalty phase mitigating factors for them to effectively do their job. They do. They have to take care of both aspects to be effective assistance of counsel. It is the proper way to do things. I think if the defense does their role correctly for sentencing, especially when this person is facing, you know, capital punishment, they must, they must put as much time as possible 
to try to save his life. So it is an effective way of handling a trial. It is an effective way of handling a trial, and they really have no choice in the matter. And also, again, when it comes to the facts of the case, it's important in front of the jury that they try to show the jury a reasonable doubt. And again, right. by fighting the credibility of Ms. Wiley, that's the way to go forward. From a practical point of view, if you're sitting on the jury, I'm curious to hear what they think if he's ultimately convicted, where they say, hey, defense, you first said not guilty, and now you're like, well, let's explain it away why he did this. So that's one way to look at it. And we're going to talk more about this a little bit later on. Let's take a break. I'm getting word that we might be able to jump into our other live trial of the day, the Todd Mullis case. Stay tuned.